welcome to the first episode in my house series. If you don't know, I recently bought my first house and I'm going to be doing a series showing you my house buying process as well as Q&As, vlogs, hauls, all that good stuff. I even made a trailer for this series so be sure to check that one out. I'll have it linked in the description box. For this first episode, I filmed a few of the open houses that I went to see and I'm going to be sharing them with you guys as well as talking through the pros and cons and the reason as to why I didn't go for those houses. Also the house that I did end up buying I am not showing in this video because I am going to be doing a whole empty house tour dedicated to it. So if you do want to see the house that I ended up buying and more videos in this series be sure to subscribe to my channel. Before I get into showing you guys the houses I thought I would run through a few things that I was looking for while house hunting. I was looking for a two to three bedroom house with decent sized bedrooms, a lot of storage units, so built-in robes, linen cupboards. I also wanted a house with a lot of natural lighting, huge windows pretty much everywhere, a small to medium sized backyard that was easy to maintain, a kitchen island. This was like a non-negotiable for me and I think they are so practical. Those were a few things that I was looking for when I was house hunting. Now let's get into the houses. This was a two bedroom, one bathroom townhouse and it was actually the first house that I went to go see. My favorite thing about this house was hands down the exterior. I loved the black bricks and the front landscaping was just beautiful. But the actual inside of the house was really small and felt very cramped and that's like the main reason I didn't really like the house. I did like the kitchen though, it felt very bright and airy. There were two bedrooms and they were both upstairs. Both bedrooms were really small, even the master bedroom itself could only only fit a queen bed and two bedside tables and that was it so it would feel very cramped especially if you have a lot of stuff and then obviously the guest bedroom was even smaller so you could only fit like maybe a desk and a single bed and that was it also the guest bedroom didn't have any built-in robes or anything so you would have to have a separate cupboard if you wanted to have it as a bedroom the overall pricing of that house as well I personally thought was very overpriced for a two-bedroom townhouse especially one really small so this was a hard pass this next townhouse I actually really liked. So it had three bedrooms, one family bathroom, one ensuite, and an extra toilet. All the bedrooms were downstairs and the kitchen, living and dining room were upstairs. They're not really that common in Australia, but I really like the look of it. I think it looked really nice. All the room sizes were really good. The master bedroom, which was all the way at the end of the hallway was huge. So you could easily fit a king size bed and have an office space and still have additional space in there as well, which which was awesome. It also had a walk-in wardrobe. And when you walk through the walk-in wardrobe, you also have the ensuite, which again, the ensuite as well was very spacious. Then the two guest bedrooms were pretty decent sizing as well. They were just average sizing and they all had built-in robes as well. The bathroom was pretty spacious. It had a bathtub, a sink and a shower. Upstairs was, like I said, the living and kitchen space. Now, when we were going up the stairs, what I noticed was the stairs actually didn't have like a proper railing going up. That was definitely a con that I noted because if you're clumsy like me, a railing is very important. I think that is kind of a little bit of a safety hazard. So that's something I didn't really like. The actual upstairs itself was so nice. It had such nice lighting. The kitchen was just so nice. Again, it had the kitchen island top, which we love. And we also had a balcony. So the balcony was massive. The only downside was that the fencing was really high. But the good thing about that is it means that it's secure and the dining and living space was pretty spacious as well. Overall, I really liked that house. I thought it was really nice. There were definitely more pros than there were cons, but I wanted to keep my options open and I felt like that house wasn't meant for me because it actually ended up being a house that was meant for someone else that I know and it ended up working out perfectly anyway because I feel like that house was definitely meant for them. This I would say was a pretty good family home. The biggest con for me, which really turned me off this house, apart from the pricing, was that the location sucked. Basically, it was kind of like in the middle of nowhere. It was surrounding nature, which was really nice. I really liked that. So it kind of felt like you were in a resort or something. But the major downside of that is it's not very close to a lot of things. You weren't close to public transport or supermarkets or things like that. Also, the house itself was really hard to find. We took like 10 minutes just trying to see where this house was located because it 
was so hard to find and the house in general I mean I liked it but it wasn't anything incredible that I was walked in and was like oh my god this is my dream house I will say though I quite like the bedrooms because the built-in robes had the glass mirrored doors so it made the rooms feel a lot bigger than they actually were and it also had a lot of light coming in which I always appreciate natural lighting but yeah I just don't think this house was worth it because there were just so many cons this was another surprise surprise townhouse this location was so beautiful it was also very close to public transport and supermarkets it also felt like a very safe and homely neighborhood this house I wanted to like so much and don't get me wrong I did like the house it was spacious it was nice it was just nothing too special and just didn't feel like the one that was for me I am all about the vibes and I just didn't get the vibe that it was a house that was going to be for me also, for a two-bedroom house, this house was definitely overpriced because the house next door sold for way cheaper. This house was actually getting sold for $50,000 more. So that was definitely something I didn't want to pay extra for, especially when the house next door that looked exactly the same sold for much cheaper. Also, this one had a European laundry. So rather than having like a separate laundry room, it was like in a cupboard. Most of the time, European laundries are meant to be in the kitchen, but this one was actually in the living room room and I didn't really like that like I think European laundries would look really good in the actual kitchen itself but in the living room space I don't like it upstairs bedrooms pretty decent sizing they both did have walk-in robes though and they all had really nice natural lighting the kitchen didn't have an island so that was a con as well I actually really liked the garden area it had a deck and there was a veggie patch and it just looked like it was very easy to maintain it also had a double carport the main reason I didn't go for this house was it was very overpriced. I didn't like the fact that the laundry was in the living room. It just felt boring. Didn't have a kitchen island. Those were a few reasons as to why I didn't go for that one. Also just didn't feel like the house was for me even though I really wanted to like it because the area was really nice and it was super convenient. Oh my god. I have so much I want to say about this house because there is so much tea to spill. I first want to apologize because I don't have that many clips touring this house because I thought I was actually going to buy this house so I would film a whole empty house tour and that's why I didn't really film too much of it. So I will most likely show pictures because I really still want to show you guys the house. But basically, first of all, this was a townhouse but it didn't have any body corporate and it had two bedrooms, a study nook, one family bathroom, one ensuite and a toilet downstairs as well. The minute I walked in that house, I was so convinced that this house was the one. I had signed the contract, I had put in an offer, everything, and turns out I was getting scammed on this house. But anyways, I absolutely love this house. Everything was pretty much so perfect. The only thing that I had a flaw with, particularly just with the house itself, was that it had a carport rather than a garage, but it wasn't anything too crazy because I loved the house so, so much. My favorite thing was definitely the kitchen. I just loved how the kitchen layout was. Everything to do with the house in general was perfect. Like the bedroom sizes were great. The master bedroom had a huge ensuite. Like it had a double shower and it had a walk-in robe. The guest bedroom had a built-in robe. So there was storage. You didn't have to worry about a cupboard. I love that there was a study nook, which would have been a perfect area for my office. I love the living room space. It was small, but it was like spacious at the same time. The garden as well was easy to maintain. But yeah, like I said, Said, I thought this was my dream house so I had signed the contract and put in an offer the vendor was just so shady and the real estate agent he was shady as well like I remember my mom and I were just like we had a gut instinct that something was not right and boy oh boy am I glad that we listened to our gut instincts because we later found out that we were getting scammed on this house it was lucky that I was able to pull out of my contract because it was still within the cooling off period after the contract had been signed so I didn't lose any money or anything like that but I did get almost scammed. I actually almost got scammed twice on this house. It's a whole other story which I will most likely do a sit down story time of but I'm not going to be explaining the whole story in this video because this video is all about the house hunting process. But yeah I basically didn't go for this house because I almost got scammed. 
this house was actually really pretty. I loved the exterior. This also didn't have any body corporate, even though it was a townhouse. And it also kind of looked like a freestanding house, not gonna lie. I love the neighborhood and surrounding areas. It was very Instagrammable. I can't believe I used to use that as an adjective, but it honestly was. But anyways, this was a three bedroom house with a family bathroom and ensuite and a toilet downstairs. Inside was just so bright. I love the lights because it was more white than yellows, which I really like when it comes to like house lighting. The kitchen, living and dining were all connected, open space. The kitchen had an island top, so love that. And there was a space for a dishwasher, but there was no dishwasher already included. So that's something you would have to actually purchase yourself. This one had a two car garage and didn't have a backyard. Instead it had kind of like, I don't know if it's called a patio area. It was just pretty much just concrete. I think this house would have had so much potential if it had a grass garden rather than an entertainment area. So when you go upstairs, there's like a massive landing, which you can convert into like a home office. The master bedroom was massive, probably one of the biggest ones I'd seen. And it also had a balcony and you could see the sunset from the balcony. It was so beautiful. It also had a walk-in wardrobe, which the walk-in robe was very spacious. There was also an ensuite, which had a sink and a shower and I think a toilet as well from memory. And then the other two bedrooms, they were pretty small, but they did come with built-in robes, which were nice. And we also had the family bathroom, which was next to the guest bedroom. And that one just had a shower, bathtub and a sink. What I liked was the toilet was actually not in the family bathroom. It was actually on the opposite side. So there was just a toilet it by itself. Overall, sounds like I had a lot of pros in this house, but there were definitely a lot of cons as well. The first one being that it was going on auction. And one thing to know about auctions is that you have to be on the ball with finance. Like you have to have your finances all ready to go on the day. Secondly, the house was not clean, even though it kind of looked clean in the videos. Trust me, there was like cobwebs, the ducted heating vents were not clean at all. It just was like very dirty. Like you would have to dust and clean a lot. The catch was that they were not going to clean the house before giving it to us. So basically you would have to clean the house yourself. So after you purchase the house, you'd have to pay for cleaners to come in and clean the house, which is going to be an extra expense. There were some things that you would have to like fix in the house. For example, obviously the dishwasher was not there, but also I remember the ensuite had like one or two cracked tiles in there. So that's something you'd need to replace if you were to purchase the house as well. So the house needed a lot of work despite the fact that it was a really nice house and of course on the auction itself the house went for way higher i think it was sold for sixty-five thousand dollars over the marketed price so even if i was to purchase that house it would have been out of my price range anyway on top of that i would have to pay for cleaning and repairing and all that stuff so it was really not worth it in the end this house was definitely the worst one that I had toured. Firstly, the location of the house gave me very sketch vibes. Like it did not feel safe at all. And then when I actually went into the house to look around, I was just not getting good vibes. I was getting bad vibes from the start. There was just something about it. I can't even give you an exact reason as to what, but my gut was just saying, don't go with it. Like don't even put in an offer. Just leave. But yeah, I did see everything. It was a three bedroom townhouse. The bedrooms were decent sizing. It had the glass sliding doors on the built-in robes in the bedrooms, which made the bedroom seem bigger. But honestly, I just did not like anything. Even though it was going for a cheap price, especially for a three bedroom house, it was probably a cheaper price for a reason. So I think I really dodged a bullet with that one. This was the last house that I'd filmed. It was a three bedroom unit and the unit was actually really cute. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. It just felt very homey. So when you walk in, you have the little living room space and then further down the hallway is the kitchen and the dining space. The dining space was actually pretty big. You could even have like a smaller dining space and another living room area if you really wanted to. The kitchen was absolutely beautiful. I loved it. And there was also the European laundry in the kitchen as well. Well, and then upstairs, which, oh my God, the stairs, first of all, were absolutely beautiful. I love the wooden stairs. I think they just blended in so well with the house. But yeah, upstairs were all three of the bedrooms. All three bedrooms were really good size. The main bedroom had a walk-in robe as well as an ensuite. And the guest bedrooms all had built-in robes as well. And upstairs, I forgot to mention, had a study nook area. So you could definitely set up your office space up there on the landing. So that was really nice. 
there was honestly not too much of a backyard. There wasn't really any grass, but it still was really nice. It was probably like the perfect size. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too small. It was just right. But the only thing is because the location of the house was so close to everything and it was also in an area that was a little bit more expensive, it was definitely over budget for me. That concludes the first episode in this house series. Hopefully you guys liked seeing some of the houses that I went and toured and also hearing my thought process with each house. Also, I did go to way more open house inspections than the ones that I showed you. I just didn't end up filming all of them. But yeah, if you enjoyed watching, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss out on other house related videos and other videos that I post. Also, I don't know how regularly the house videos are going to be going up because I have so much to edit and I have other videos that I need to edit as well. And also because we are in lockdown, I have not been able to film any furniture shopping vlogs or anything like that as of yet. So I don't know my exact schedule for uploading the house videos yet. So please be patient with me. The videos will be coming out. I just don't know exactly when they will be. Anyways, thank you so much for watching again and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Love, love.